Oh, hi, it's Rob, and uh, it's it's go time in the kitchen. Today is the day when I start putting down the concrete on the countertops. Uh, I spent a good portion of yesterday taping off the counters and putting down the drop cloth. Um, this is a important preparation step that is really really boring to watch on camera. So uh, I figured that. I just let you guys, you know, believe me when I did this. So here are some of the things I'm going to be using. Um, the actual concrete underlayment is uh, either the Henry 549 or the Ardex Feather Finish. I don't think there's a difference between the two, really. I mean, there might be some slight chemical differences, but they're almost exactly the same in the way that they work. Uh, they go to a feather edge. The 549 was available in the store at uh, Home Depot, and it is, you know, made with Ardex technology. So I'm guessing that it's pretty much the same. I am also going to be using some concrete dyes or concrete coloring mixtures. Uh, I've got four here between, uh, I got brown, brick red, or tan, brown, brick red, black, and I've got some uh, iron oxide pigment. This is a little bit different because it's black, but it's got this slight orange uh, tint to it, which is nice. One of the other things that I wanted to go into was I got this, which is a super plasticizer. Laying down the concrete is uh, something that's relatively easy, or at least that's what I hear. I'm going to be using a 12 inch taping knife for most of it. Uh, I also have this uh, 24 inch trim guard. It's pretty much just a straight edge to try and get a nice even surface. And I have a brush here for doing some texturing. Of course, rubber gloves. Don't work with concrete without wearing gloves. Now before we go into this too much, uh, I have never done this before. I have worked with concrete in the past and I have watched a bunch of YouTube videos of uh, people putting this on. There are some things that I want to go over very specifically. Uh, one is in the mixing. I'm going to be starting off with the small counters here, uh, just because this is the easiest, smallest piece. <clears throat> it's also normally covered by a microwave and some other things, but uh, we're going to start with this one because this one, I don't know, I just feel better starting with something that's a little bit smaller. I, I have wiped down the surface pretty well with uh, cloth and got it clean. Uh, now I'm just going to go over it lightly with acetone to get rid of any oils or waxes. Uh, I don't know if this is particularly necessary. I just would like to be thorough and proactive. Oh yeah, a little bit left. Mixing instructions call for two parts of the concrete to one part water. Now I've seen a number of YouTube channels that have said that this is too thick of a mixture, that it's too hard to spread, so they add water to it. Do not do that. The reason for it is because concrete doesn't dry, it cures. There's a chemical reaction that happens and having the proper water ratio helps maintain the strength of the concrete. If you add water to it and make it soupier, you decrease the strength tremendously to a point where you can make it so that it will just eventually flake off and disappear. Kitchen counters, of course, take a lot of abuse. This laminate material is a lot harder than I expected it to be. And I was surprised at how difficult it was to get a good score on this, onto the material. And I'm going to add a little bit of this buff colorant. Uh, I'm not going to be super accurate with it because um, this is <laughs> this is going to be a very modeled look anyway. And this coat is the 
base coat, the, the sticky coat, I don't know what you want to call it, the, the bonding coat, I suppose, because it's bonding to the bonding to the concrete. Or bonding to the laminate. I'm also going to be using the concrete bonding adhesive um, to displace some or all of the water in these coats. Uh, this first one, we're going to see how it works. I'm going to go three quarters of a cup of that. And one quarter cup of water. I'm going to add some of the Melflux Super Plasticizer. I'm going to do it after I mix it a little bit so that we can see if it makes a difference in the texture. And you can see the consistency of that. It's a little like cake batter, I guess. I'm gonna Not adding much. It doesn't take a lot. Um, it did make a difference. This is definitely runnier than the cake batter version. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a little bit easier to spread, but I think we're ready to go. Let's get to spreading. This is very messy. This is the first coat that's on. Uh, I'm letting it dry and cure minimum of three hours uh, before I start sanding. It'll probably be a little bit longer. Uh, it is definitely a rough coat, as you can tell. I did that deliberately because I want to have more surface area for the next layer to grab onto. All right, first impressions. Uh, the easiest way that I found to lay out the concrete is to 
pour it out first and then spread it out with the trowel a bit and then get in there with your hands. It's a lot like finger painting and it's kind of fun. Uh, the surface is not even, it is not level, it doesn't need to be. I do not have full coverage on everything. I don't need to have full coverage on everything. This is the base coat. This is the, the bonding coat, the scratch coat, whatever you want to call it. This is not going to provide the texture for the surface. Uh, it is going to provide a uniform base to build the next layers on. This has been left to dry, cure, whatever you want to call it, for about three hours. It's Pretty solid. Now, of course, I just knocked down something so the dogs are going crazy. It uh, feels pretty solid, so now I'm going to start sanding. This is the surface after sanding, and the white stuff in here that you might think is dust is not. That is just the surface of the sanded concrete. Uh, this isn't perfectly smooth. It wasn't going to be perfectly smooth because I made it rough intentionally. But this should be a good enough surface to give us a good base moving forward. Well, that looks like crap. It feels okay though. And we have nice wide swaths of something that is a planar surface. Um, I still need to kind of hit these edges with a hand sander. And of course the place where I did the repair is, you know, there's still some mismatch in the height and so on, but we're gonna be doing multiple layers of concrete. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna hit these the sides, the corners, those places that I couldn't get with the um, orbital sander. So this time I'm going to try terracotta as the color. So I'll have a slightly different look on here. But this is the recipe that I found. Two cups of the concrete. One cup of the acrylic bonding cement. This is, uh, can, it has the consistency of like a thin paint or a slightly watery school glue. Add some color tint. Oh, I should shake that up. You honestly do not need a lot of the coloring. It goes a long way. And one tablespoon of the super plasticizer. All right, the second coat is on. This one is uh, the terracotta color. 
I've got a few little bumps and things in here, some grooves, but all in all, this went on smoother than the last one. Uh, over here, I ran into some issues, but overall, I think this is going okay. Uh, this one is going to go overnight because it's late and I want to go to bed. And we'll get back at it tomorrow, pick up the sanding, and go from there. Another useful tool that I've found, um, especially for getting into the small spaces, doing the tops of the backsplash and things like that, a silicone spatula. Uh, with this, it works almost like a paintbrush. You just sort of paint it on and, and put it in place, and it smooths out pretty well. Uh, you could go over it with a, a trowel straight edge, but it's, I think the sanding is probably going to do a lot smoother. Uh, but it was much easier to put on all of that. It is the next day, and this surface has dried, cured, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can see these little bits and pieces that have flaked up. That's what happens when it's starting to get toward the end of its workable time. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of mismatch in the color here. And that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. But now I guess we get to sanding again. This is after sanding the second coat. You can see some of the places where I went through down to the base coat and even some into the uh, laminate over here trying to get this evened out. I think it's working. Uh, I really kind of wanted to see especially these places where it would come through. There's some other ones over here. I'm kind of liking that the modeled look but trying to figure out how to get that across the whole thing and not have those scratches and gouges. That's the tough one. So this is the third coat that I put on here. Uh, this is with no pigmentation at all. This is just the basic color of the concrete. It's uh, sort of a neutral gray. And I'm kind of liking this. There's definitely modeling going on because largely of the thickness of the coats that I've laid down and the barking of the dogs. Uh, so I'm going to try another pigmented layer on top of this one but I need to sand it down first and I want to try and get some of that back edge sanded better. I think this was coat number three uh, yeah, this is the, the neutral gray, just without any pigmentation. I've been playing with trying to add some pigment to the surface and seeing how that works, trying some different techniques. Uh, I think being able to add some variation in the color will make this pop quite a bit. It is the, I don't know, the morning of the fourth day, I think. <laughs> And this is what I have now. This is unsanded. Uh, this is, I think I put down four coats last night without sanding, all in different colors. I don't know, it may have been five. Uh, but I wanted to go for some variation. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to look once it's sanded, but uh, sanding is today and I guess we'll find out if it turned out okay. There are two basic things that I'm looking for with this sanding. I'm hoping that I've got the surface to a point where I can sand it flat. Uh, anything that's left over is I'm gonna just hope for little dents and dings and things that I can fill in. Uh, the other one is the color variation. Uh, the A lot of that is going to be sanded through uh, and I'm hoping that in sanding through the variations that were in there when I overlaid the multiple layers will come out with some variations in color that are a little more organic. 
we'll see. Uh, you know, I mean, if nothing else, I can put another coat on. So I've got this sanded down pretty well, and I think it's a little bit too patchy. Uh, it's very noisy and contrasting with the floor. I think the the tonal quality is about right, but it's, uh, I don't know, stuff like here, it's just a little too old barn kind of stuff. It's not what I was going for. Um, I think I'm going to do another layer on top of this and then sand that one back and hopefully that will help mute everything and bring it together with more more of a single color. But yeah, I'll go from there. I, I am going to hope that this is the final coat that is going on. Uh, I've lost track of how many. I think it's like, it's like eight now, seven, eight, somewhere in there. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty flat. There's going to be some modeling just because of the uh, I guess brush strokes, for lack of a better term. Uh, the, um, the taping knife that I put on there. But uh, once again, we're going to let this dry for a few hours and then give it a sanding and see what it looks like. I'm also having to do a uh, considerable cleanup. I mean, if you look at this, the, uh, you know, I've got lots of stuff on the wall that I didn't expect to get. I should have done the taping and masking better than I did, but I didn't. So now I'm going to have some post cleanup stuff too. I don't know how many days it's been. I lost track. I think it's day five, might be six. Um, Pretty much done with the concrete part itself. Um, I got it sanded down to a 320 grit, uh, did a stain coat on it. Now I used wood stain, which is something a little different, but it's an oil base stain and then there's I'm going to put an oil base sealer over it. So I, I, I don't see it as a problem. I have done stained concrete with wood stain before and it's worked just fine. Um, but I'm going to try the sealer. I'm going to do one coat and see how it goes um, and I'm sure it's going to take multiple coats the one of the things I've discovered is that this stuff is porous and it will let water through if it's not sealed properly so uh, the sealing step is going to be interesting I'm gonna find out how to do that today